Sunday, March 3, The Lord's Unstoppable Faithfulness Read Psalm 78. What three key historical epochs are highlighted in this psalm? What recurring lessons does Asaph draw from each period? Let's read Psalm 78, and I'll just remind you it's a fairly long psalm, but worth reading. It's titled, A Contemplation of Asaph. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God, they refused to walk in his law, and forgot his works, and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvellous things he did in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the waters stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness, and gave them drink in abundance like the depths. He also brought streams out of the rock, and caused waters to run down like rivers. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy, Yes, they spoke against God. They said, Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock, so that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. Yet he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, had rained down manna on them to eat, and given them of the bread of heaven. Men ate angels' food. He sent them food to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He also rained meat on them like the dust, feathered fowl like the sand of the seas, and he let them fall in the midst of their camp, all around their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not deprived of their craving, but while their food was still in their mouths, the wrath of God came against them and slew the stoutest of them and struck down the choice men of Israel. In spite of this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wondrous works. Therefore their days he consumed in futility and their years in fear. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and sought earnestly for God. Then they remembered that God was their rock, and the most high God their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth, and they lied to him with their tongue. For their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. But he being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away, and he did not stir up all his wrath, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power, 
the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan, turned their rivers into blood and their streams that they could not drink. He sent swarms of flies among them which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He also gave their crops to the caterpillar and their labour to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He also gave up their cattle to the hail and their flocks to fiery lightning. He cast on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. He made a path for his anger. He did not spare their soul from death, but gave their life over to the plague and destroyed all the firstborn in Egypt, the first of their strength in the tents of Ham. But he made his own people go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely so that they did not fear. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies and he brought them to his holy border. This mountain, which his right hand had acquired, he also drove out the nations before them, allotted them an inheritance by survey, and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents. Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God, and did not keep his testimonies, but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. When God heard this, he was furious and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, like a mighty man who shouts because of wine, and he beat back his enemies. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth which he has established forever. He also chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes that had young he brought him, to shepherd Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them by the skilfulness of his hands." The reviews of Israel's past highlight God's faithfulness and Israel's unfaithfulness. They also should teach coming generations not to repeat their ancestors' mistakes, but to trust God and to remain faithful to his covenant. The psalmist uses history as a parable, as he read in verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings. Of old, which means that the people should deeply ponder the psalm's message and search for the meaning for themselves. Psalm 78 verse 2 is a prophetic description of Jesus' method of teaching in parables, as you read in Matthew chapter 13 verses 34 to 35. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. The psalm also reflects on the time of the Exodus in verses 9 to 54, the settlement in Canaan from 55 to 64, and the time of David from 65 to 72. It demonstrates God's glorious deeds and the consequences of the people's breaking of their covenant with God. Israel's history recounts many forms of the people's disloyalty to God, especially their idolatry, as he says in verse 58. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. 
When reading the psalm, one is overwhelmed with the people's constant stubbornness and spiritual blindness in contrast to the Lord's boundless patience and grace. How is each new generation so slow to learn? Before we get overly judgmental of past generations, we should consider ourselves. Aren't we also forgetful of God's past wonders and neglectful of his covenantal requirements? The psalm does not encourage people to rely on their own deeds. Instead, Psalm 78 shows the futility of human will unless it is grounded in constant awareness of God's faithfulness and an acceptance of His grace. The unsuccessful battles of God's people in Psalm 78 verse 9 and verses 62 to 64 elucidate the psalm's lesson that human efforts, apart from faithfulness to God, are doomed to end in failure. Verse 9 reads, The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. And in verses 62 to 64... He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. The fire consumed the young men and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. So to finish today, what lessons have you learned or should have learned from your past mistakes? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.